G'day, Bomber fans. What an awesome game of footy that was last night. Great occasion, dream time in Darwin. Both teams battled it out, uh, hard fought for quarters. Neither team could be separated. In the end, it was a really tight and high level of footy on display from two potential finalists. It was finals like footy, so let's talk about this game, starting with a quarter-by-quarter quarter recap. Well, the first quarter showed just how tough the night would be. Uh, two very similar teams in terms of quality battling out. We opened the scoring through a Sophie Alexander snap. Uh, they kicked the next two through Katie Brennan. 14-7 to seven at quarter time, but we did have a lot of the game playing on our terms. We had more of the footy, more possession, more territory, uh, but they were opening us up a bit in defense. They had the upper hand but it was tight. Early stage of that second looked like we were holding on by a bit of a thread. It was a bit worrying. Uh, Daria Bannister got us back to within a goal, but a, a fourth Richmond major had us on the back foot. Uh, enter Bonnie too good though. She, who was, she was on an absolute tear. She converted a goal after a diving mark and then set up Steph Wales not long after that for a goal, making sure we entered the main break. Uh, level on points. 26 with the Tigers. The third, we really started to get going a bit more. Uh, a fortunate free kick gave Bonnie too good a second goal of the game uh, to give us the lead, and Georgia G dribbled her first to put us two goals clear. There was some toing and froing from there with the Tigers managing to bring back the deficit by just six points. Uh, it was 40 to 34 at the end of the Premiership quarter, meaning we had to hold on to a very small lead to keep our season alive and boost our finals aspirations. Well, the last quarter was a genuine slog. The Tigers kicked a goal back to make it a really, really tight game, and from there, both teams were just trading behinds. Daria Bannister had the chance to put us a goal in front uh, with three minutes left, but missed her shot narrowly. And then, of course, uh, Steph Wales went down with what looks to be a really bad knee injury. Fingers crossed there. I'll talk about that a bit later in the video in a second. Uh, but after that, it was all about how well we could hold on to the game. Uh, we conceded a behind to tie things up, and somehow we managed to contain the Tigers' non-stop attacks to keep the game even. A fair result in the end, I reckon. Both teams played terrific footy, both deserved points. A draw is not ideal for either team, really, but it's the fair result, so... Let's talk about this horsing game of footy. Uh, how did the result come to be? Well, let's just talk about the quality of this game because it was a really fun one. It was really thrilling. Uh, there were high skills on display in what were genuinely close to rainy conditions because it is the wet season up in Darwin right now. Uh, the conditions were very tough, but both sets of teams were up to the fight, playing high pressure, high intensity footy. It was really awesome to watch. It was the most enjoyable game of the year, um, for Essendon at least. Uh, but again, complaints about the comp. This game being played this late in the year up in Darwin was always going to result in some injuries. It's not just hot, it's it's 31 degrees at 9pm. It is rough, and it's also, it's the wet season, it's slippery. We not only saw cramps, but uh, we saw what looked to be uh, a bad hamstring injury for Richmond. We saw Steph Wales slip and buckle her knee, which I don't know what that injury is yet, we'll find out. Footy is a winter sport, and this competition ends the day before summer, the grand final, that is. That is just not right. Um, but still, these conditions are just not fair for athletes. We, we, get, we get to see a great game of footy. That's ideal, but it was a really brutal one. Those Playing in that is as hard as I've seen across both comps for some time, including the men's. But credit to the girls. Uh, they dished out a ripper game and really gave it their all all night, both sets of teams. Uh, there are always blokes in the comments talking about how average the quality of this league is. I would like to see them go out and play a full game in those conditions. It's really impressive stuff from both teams, uh, but it really shouldn't be happening. This is a winter sport. We should not be playing as many games in 30 degree heat as we are. And not even that. We're playing games in 30 degree heat and then having to have spans of four games in 14 days, whatever it was the other week. That That's just ridiculous. And it's it's pretty embarrassing from the AFL. All right, the game itself, uh, it was a bit of a contrasting one in terms of play style. We were channeling our inner Brad Scott and possessing the footy. We only had three more contested possessions. So that aspect of the game was even. But we had around plus 50 more uncontested tested possessions. We had 77 marks to their 37. Uh, that is after we averaged 51 for the rest of the season. We were moving the ball sideways a bit at times, but it was helping us defend uh, by, I guess, virtue of not allowing them to attack. And it also helped us find the footy in some dangerous areas. We didn't kick any specky goals. Most were around 20 to 30 meters out directly in front, set shots. But there was a reason for that. Uh, we did well to put the ball in dangerous areas and keep it there. Uh, in the end, we probably should have won with the chances we got. Uh, people were pointing the finger at Daria Bannister, but she wasn't the only one who missed a set shot. We did really well to put the ball in areas that you should score from. Quite often, the men find marks inside 50, but in not ideal areas for scoring. Last night, the girls not only tallied 10 marks inside 50 to, uh, to 6, 
um, but they did it against they did it in great areas. So that that was good to see. It meant our attacks were really hard for the Tigers to keep out. Look, a win would be nice, but a draw is the next best result. Uh, and to be fair, I didn't really expect a, a draw anyway. I was thinking we would lose. I think the Tigers went into the game dollar thirty or forty favourites, so pretty heavy. Uh, for our girls to come out, uh, come from behind as well, get that close to winning without losing, you got to be a bit proud. I reckon the boys probably would have gone into their shell and crumbled when the Tigers were piling goals early. Uh, but the girls used that as fuel to get back in the game and put themselves in a winning position. We finished the round inside the eight in eighth spot. A win would have put us in the same result, but given us a chance to move up higher next week. But at this stage, it looks like we're set for an away final if we do make the eight. Uh, we have a game against Carlton to get through. I'll talk about that soon. Uh, first, I'll get onto the votes for this game, but... Yeah, really impressed and proud of the Bombers. It's good to support at least one Essendon team who you can trust to give you a 10 out of 10 energy performance. Yes, we could have won. It would have been, it would have been nice. I'm not 100% thrilled with that. Can always ask for more, but to get what we got was really great. So well done, girls. Finish it off next week and lock in a spot in the eight. Uh, let's get on to the votes. One vote to Steph Wales. Uh, she was a huge presence around the ground, and you felt that presence sapped late when she went down with that injury. Hopefully all is well. We'll find out in the coming days. Uh, two votes to the ever-consistent Georgia Nanscorn, who was brilliant in the guts. Uh, Maddie Gay, three votes. I mean, for starters, she played out over 90% of the game. No one else on our team did that, and in those conditions, that is nuts. Uh, but to do that and then lead the team for tackles, meters gained, and probably a handful of other stats as well, just awesome stuff. Maddie P, four votes, Another, she's just a machine. She was yet again uh, brilliant. Uh, she just, just about claimed her first Everything Essendon Player of the Year award. It's within reach now, but five votes to Bonnie Toogood. Her first votes of the year, and it was a maximum. Uh, she was the game changer up forward. She kicked two goals, two behind, six score involvements, more than anyone on the ground. Uh, but she also pulled up late with a game-saving mark in D50. Just an awesome captain's performance. Special mention to uh, Alex Morecambe, Amelia Radford, Bess Keeney, a bunch of players, really. It was a it was a team effort. Awesome stuff from the girls. Time for the overall tally. Quick look at the tally with at least one game left. I'm going to include finals in this count as well, so uh, we may have more. Chris Parkis is now game clear, which means if we miss the eight, she will be the winner or joint winner of the Everything uh, Essendon Player of the Year award if, if Gay gets that perfect five, it's joint. Gay is second above Nanscorn, but not by much. Georgia Clark is fourth, and from there, it's a log jam with five players separated by two or three votes. Uh, there's about for a top five spot. Lots going on. And now a preview for the final game of the year. Right, on to next week. We take on Carlton. A win, we make finals. Lose, there is a chance. Teams below us leapfrog us. So it is a massive game. It's a, a mini final. We got to win it. Carlton play after I release, or I guess record this video. But either way, they are mathematically not a chance to play finals. So the stakes are higher for us. Big rivals though. So they'll try and end our season early. Play party poopers. They'll come to play. Uh, we just have to hope our girls do as well. The big worry for me is Steph Wales. That knee looks really nasty. I, I doubt she's available to play the rest of the season. I'm just hoping it's not an ACL. An ACL injury on the eve of finals would all but rule her out of next season as well. And that would be really horrible for such a young, uh, promising player. She's been excellent for us this season and, and last season as well. So let's hope that knee is not as bad as it looks. But a massive game next week to get through. Let's hope the girls are ready. That is that. Uh, I, was, I was about to say big win, but I guess big draw. And you know what? It does feel closer to a win than a draw. So I'm happy with it. It means we aren't relying on other teams next Next week we go out and win against the Blues and make the eight and if we don't we only have ourselves to blame. That is all though. Cheers for watching guys. Like, subscribe and go Bombers.